Dwayne, from your perspective, what is an Agile coach? Welcome to the last Lean Agile Strategies and Tactics podcast. Lean Agile Strategies and Tactics for your personal, professional, and corporate growth in today's constantly changing and challenging business environments. Dwayne, from your perspective, what is an Agile coach? Yeah, that's a great question. There are a handful of accredited, very useful, true certifications that you can put that diploma on the wall and say, I'm an Agile coach and I've been certified. The reality is an Agile coach is someone that holds up the mirror for others and helps them see a true, honest reflection. And when they do see that reflection, there's a mixture of it's not as bad as it seems. And here's how you can make it even better. And that's, you mentioned your role as a scrum master of the facilitation. Often that's the only part of the role that many scrum masters I work with understand. And and a lot of it is organizational constraints. The organization is telling them that's what you do. You're a facilitator. I like to teach both scrum masters and release train engineers from a safe perspective that there's three pillars you focus on, three legs of the stool. Facilitation, obviously, and that's the most easily recognized because you see it. You see it in team events, in safe events, and so forth. But the other two, coaching and relentless improvement. Coaching, holding up that mirror, and as people see the truth, and we've mentioned in previous podcasts about things like value stream mapping and different things like that. There's different ways to hold up the mirror than just echoing back what you're hearing from that person. It's look, let's look at the system. How is it working? Let's look at our quality. Let's, let's put those metrics and measurements in place. That's part of coaching as well is to see how are we doing? And then the relentless improvement and the analogy I like to use, you know, if anyone's ever rowed a boat up a stream, As you're rowing the boat up the stream, you're making progress, but you're going against the current. What happens when you stop rowing? You don't sit still. You go back downstream. And that's the concern that when, let's say, scrum masters or even coaches that aren't focused on that relentless improvement, if we're not focused on that, on diligently always trying to move the system forward, we are going backwards. There is no steady state, especially in a lean agile transformation, if you are not daily moving forward, however, incrementally, you are going backwards. No, no in between. And so from a coaching perspective, when you extract that person, let's say a lot of agile coaches come from scrum master roles and so forth, you extract that person out and say, we need you to just coach. First of all, I commend the organization, however much they understand the value of coaching, they at least have recognized it enough to say, this is an important thing to do. But then that person has to take on learning, continuing to learn more about the coaching. Um, I know in my own self, in my personal life, I road race motorcycles and I at various times been okay quick to doing okay and in novice and expert class to winning a couple of races here and there. But I also coach. And what I've found is by coaching, I have to be more cognizant. I have to be more aware of um, where my eyes are as I'm riding on the track, because that's one of the key things to speed is, is moving your eyes well, looking down track where my eyes are, my body position, things like that. To be able to coach, I have to apply those things to my own approach, my own racing. And agile coaches need to take what they're trying to teach and first apply it to themselves. Relentless improvement. Am I relentlessly improving? Am I constantly learning new things, building new skill sets, challenging myself, disrupting my mental models? If I can't do that for myself, how can I coach others to do that? And the, the, oh, go ahead. Well, that's such a, like an interesting way to describe it. So just to share a personal story, um, when I left the military in 2016, so the military very sort of, in many respects, very sort of rigid and structured uh, process and and, uh, organization as far as like how to manage, for example, projects. That was the, 
the the experience and the template uh, of of what led me to get my PMP uh, w and and sort of dive into the the waterfall methodology around project management. Um, and it's funny because when I look at the the contrast between operations and planning, um, a lot of the planning stuff met with waterfall, operations met with agile, and so I. As an, as an operations guy, I naturally gravitated towards, once I was exposed to it, agile methodologies, you know, scrum, lean, um, and, and sort of naturally gravitated in that direction. And through curiosity, really, and through, you know, my desire to, to self-improve, I, I've gone through a journey of continually getting all these different designations <laughs> to, to improve my, my personal uh, knowledge base and sort of, you know, to, to be at a point where, like I say, um, in, with the last, uh, uh, corporation that I was working with, uh, I was coaching them on agile processes as their, as one of their subject matter experts on, on agile processes. So, um, sorry, I, I, I was thinking when you were describing that, that's that mindset, that attitude of continuous improvement, the idea that mm -hmm. you're constantly challenging your status quo, that you're seeking out opportunities to, from a personal level, improve, and then from an organizational uh, perspective, apply improvements. Um, yeah, it, uh, it it ties in and resonates with my personal experience. So a couple of quotes I like. One is what I teach release train engineers and scrum masters to have the attitude of always happy, never content. Always asking what's next, what's next. I'm a big uh, fan of the, the West Wing series with uh, Martin Sheehan is, is the, uh, <clears throat> the president of the United States. And one of the things he always did is he would finish with a subject and say, what's next? We're moving on to the next subject, next subject. Um, and as RTEs, who are absolute coaches for the agile release train within a safe construct, they are always happy, never content. They're saying, wow, that was awesome teams. We did a great job. Here's what we're going to take on next. Uh, Marguerite Stearns, a coworker of mine, has a really good phrase. She calls it constructively dissatisfied. And it's something you wear in your shirt sleeve. It's something that you almost proudly wear as a badge, if you will that people can see that you're in that continuous state of we're making really good progress. What's next? Mm -hmm. And they come to anticipate that and it becomes contagious. And that's when you start to build the DNA within the organization. And I think that's a key part of the agile coaching that is missed very often because it's that subtle nuance undertone that is absolutely vital to true transformation is people building that DNA of always happy, never content.